grocery shopping yesterday. Not yesterday, last week. I don't know why I said yesterday. But I was grocery shopping last week. And when I go grocery shopping, I'm one of those who I don't mind eating the same thing day after day after day after day. It really doesn't faze me. If I like the food, I'll keep eating it. So my grocery bill for a long time was, let's say, a bit, the core food that I get all the, every time each month was about 60 bucks. And then I give myself somewhere from 20 to 30 to maybe get seconds of something or, you know, stockpile or try something new. There was this um, Goya product, some squid bites, a uh, $1 box of pre-packaged, pre-cooked pieces of squid, whether in chunk or with the tentacle. And I was, I, I make it a policy of mine that every time I go to Walmart in particular, <laughs> I got to find something new that I've never had before. Try it. I got to say, when I came home, I was like, you know what? I don't want to wait. I'm going to just try these now. I'm just going to cook them. And I didn't know what to cook them with because when I bought them, they were the last thing I put in the grocery uh, shopping cart. I didn't buy anything to go with it. So all I did was just cook some white mm. rice, some black beans, and I just threw them on top with a bunch of garlic uh, powder. That was the most uh, rough, chewy, uh, black bean combination I've ever had in my life. It's not to say I don't make rice and beans all the time. I know what that's supposed to taste like. The squid, I've had plenty of calamari. It didn't taste like squid at all. It was, um, it literally was just like chewing the rubber. I've had gator, and it tasted just like rubber. Um, my partner was having some. She loved it. I was, uh, <laughs> she's like, I want more. Like, you can finish it. You guys know me very well. I really am not one to stop eating food, no matter how bad it was. But I just, I couldn't save the flavor of this meal that I'd conjured. Uh, have you guys had those kind of similar experiments where you tried to make some new product, even if it's just one ingredient and it's just ruins the whole meal, you just can't enjoy it anymore? Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of. I mean, not as in-depth as that. I just, so... I've actually wanted to try truffles for a long time, just never really made the moves to do so. But um, there, I kept seeing these ads for this sauce called like Truff or something, and it costs way too much for what it is. But it's, <laughs> like, I, I ordered it, and I was really excited about it. And I mean, I guess in a sense, that was going to be like my first kind of taste of truffles or whatever. And honestly, it was kind of disgusting, and I was really disappointed. And like I tried it on a bunch of different things because it has like an interesting flavor profile to it. So, you know, it, it I guess it's not like your typical hot sauce, but like it was more sweet than it was hot, and that kind of had me fucked up. But then I was like, well, maybe I'll try something else truffle oriented, and it'll be good. And I tried these like truffle oil fries, and it was also kind of disgusting. So maybe I just don't like truffles, or maybe it's just like the concentrates that ruined meals and stuff for me but i was like kind of crushed because i've been looking forward to at least seeing what it was like for a while and that's all my experience really was but i still want to at least like try the actual slices before i call it but that was actually like kind of devastating for me yeah i um i like to experiment with food so i'm not afraid to make something that tastes awful and eat it but that squid i just Something about it, I couldn't stand it. I finished my bowl after about 40 minutes. Let me clarify. I did finish it, but I didn't go back for seconds to finish the leftovers, which is usually something I would do. It took me about 35 minutes to eat a small bowl of this stuff. I was just in agony. And my stomach was churning the next day. And it's not that it wasn't cooked. I made sure this stuff was cooked. I wasn't going to wait and possibly eat something raw. Um... It just, that was so unsettling for my stomach. But the, uh, the other, other, some like weird food stuff I've tried before, uh, what, what was it called? It was, um, I've had corn flavored soda. I've had, uh, grass flavored Oreos. I've had fire ants, just regular fire, uh, dehydrated fire ants thrown in as a seasoning powder over top of other kinds of chips and cakes before. It's a really weird 
stuff. And none of those, it's not that they taste bad, but you, you don't eat it going, yeah, I want more of this. Um, <laughs> yeah. What, what about you, Anthony? So my most recent experience um, involved buying some chicken um, from the grocery store. And after cooking it, like it smelled so good. Like I seasoned it well. I had it mixed with all kinds of vegetables. Like it, it was going to end up supposed to be a good meal, but then I bite into the chicken and it tasted like rubber. And it was it's some chicken I hadn't bought in a while. Um, but I bought it out of convenience and it was pre frozen, but it just it wasn't right. It tasted old out of the, like, after it thawed. Like, it was like a frozen old chicken. And it just, it was bad. Like, I'd bite into it, it tasted like rubber. It couldn't, it wasn't chewable. Like, and I didn't cook it any different than what I would have done for other frozen chicken. But it was bad, and I threw all the shit away. I, I threw it away, and I went out to Taco Bell down the street. Because <laughs> that was... I'd rather have a bad next day than eat some food that just didn't taste right while eating it. And that was, I'll never buy it again. Um, but then I think about too, like the difference, what were the differences between what I did preparing this meal compared to prior days? And what made a difference was the ingredient. Well, what was different about the ingredients? Start asking why. Let's get to a root cause of why the fuck did I just waste like 30 bucks on this shitty ass meal? And <laughs> I started realizing the chicken that I bought was too thick. So like, and it was frozen. So frozen chicken in general, it, it typically, you have to be careful when you're cooking it or it's not going to always turn out as you expect. Um, you have to like thaw it out a little bit, really slow cook it so you don't overcook the outside. And then like once you get to cook and you don't want to like cause it to be like to where the outside's cooked and then the inside's still cold. It's not like some hamburger meat or a steak where you want a red center. You want that chicken cooked. And this chicken was twice as thick as what I normally cook. Um which I think might have played a factor. It was also very cheap. So like when you're cooking something that this, the focus of the meal is like the meat with that is seasoned. Like if this was like some chicken noodle soup or something, the focus of the meal is like the soup and the flavor that you can put some shitty ass quality chicken, like red meat or like, thighs and some chicken noodle soup and it's not going to affect the quality overall or the expectation of quality in the chicken noodle soup but when your focus of the meal is the meat and you use this low quality meat you really need to think about um whether this is going to do for what you're cooking you need to probably spend a little bit more on something of higher quality so that way you enjoy it like but there's a reason why there's different grades of quality for different stuff. It's like I've made some apple pies before and like you could get some red delicious, more expensive apples, or you can just get some cheaper apples that are half the price in a bag, but they're not as sweet. And the reason you can get away with that is because in the apple pie, the apples, I mean, that's the focus of the pie, but you add a ton of seasoning, you add a ton of sugar. You don't need the most expensive apples to accomplish the same kind of texture, the the same a similar flavor. You get what I'm saying? I do, and I just wanted to say hello and thank you, everybody, for joining us. This is another episode of Unfiltered Pineapple, a podcast amongst nine friends having conversations about whatever comes to mind, and your soon-to-be favorite accidental cooking show. Anyways, <laughs> you, you, tell, you mentioned red delicious or more expensive, which brings up another pressing issue that a lot of people are going through right now is the ingredients they want to use to make their favorite foods or to experiment with are getting more expensive. Uh, inflation is a rising thing in the U.S. and around the world. Um, are you guys 
changing your budgets? Are you guys changing your grocery list and coming up with new foods for this? Or are you just st- uh, doubling down and staying with what you normally do? I'm actually not like buying as many things. Like I'm finding my meals are becoming simpler from what they used to be. I used to add a whole lot more of different varieties of vegetables to my meals. Um, And I used to use higher quality like grains and different things when I would cook. Now I'm just buying the cheapest there are and I'm only getting a small variety just to at least make the food edible to where I can eat a similar thing day after day. Like I'm not even using as many spices because spices are kind of getting expensive too. Like I mean, spices in general aren't expensive, but when they go from a dollar to two, three dollars, and you use that two or three different spices on your stuff at a time, and then you use them up in like a week, like I mean that adds up. So yeah, it's definitely changing the way I'm eating, which is kind of sad because I enjoyed how I ate before. I mean, I I guess I'm kind of sticking it out for now. I mean, sort of. I end up going to like Costco and buying some things in bulk. I don't need a whole lot for just me, and then I'll kind of supplement that by running to regular grocery stores. I know it's like a little bit of a difference in price, but I don't know. Maybe you've just been shielded up here in VA from like the worst of the inflation, but. At least personally, I can luckily say it's not been bad enough yet that I'm really changing the way I shop much. I mean, I did used to do HelloFresh a lot. I haven't really lately. I mean, that said, you know, like gas and stuff is expensive. That affects things. And since gas is really pricey, it's just going to be a domino effect. I mean, it has been a domino effect. But for me, at least for right now, not a whole lot has changed on like the shopping front for me. But I'm sure it probably will before too long, but but we'll just have to see. It hasn't changed too much of my shopping habits either. I was always very conservative with what I used to put on my grocery list, and I haven't really changed the products because I was already buying the cheap stuff anyways. <laughs> but <laughs> the um, it certainly does change how I approach shopping. I'm not going to just grab things. I do also like to see how much prices are changing so that I don't reach for, let's say, a carton of milk and notice that it's suddenly $2 more expensive and don't know when that happened. Um, But I haven't, I I do the math when I finish grocery shopping. It's not going up too much. Um, But that does bring up another thought that I wanted to get into today is when, when it comes to eating out, like, yeah, grocery shopping, It's everyone knows it's cheaper to cook at home than to eat out. When it comes to eating out, uh, I haven't personally, granted I'm not a regular attendee of restaurants, but I haven't personally noticed too many prices going up at, let's just say, chains like Outback, Longhorn Steakhouse, Chipotle, things like that. Like, I know the prices go up slowly and incrementally, but I don't think they've gone up anything excessive. And you guys can obviously feel free to disagree on that. What I, what I wanted to complain about is, and I know not everyone's going to like this, it's going to be a little unpopular here, but I think fast food is too expensive for what you're actually getting. Yes, <laughs> it is. Fast food, like I can go to some rest, sit down restaurants, get higher quality food than what I get driving through a fucking McDonald's that's going to make my stomach hurt and make me feel sick the next day. Yeah. Quality over quantity, man. I it's agree. It's convenience, but that's the thing. Our society is willing to pay, lose quality in return for convenience, and they'll pay the same amount for it. So it's a societal thing that we're getting to at this point, which can be caused by so many other things. Fast food came about years ago based on the idea it was convenient for the working man um, who didn't have time to cook. Well, now we're at a point that people are so limited on time, they're so reliant on those fast food avenues to just eat that they totally sacrifice their quality, but they dig themselves into a deeper hole with their health and overall life um standards so we can open up a whole nother world of conversation from that 
Oh, yeah, I agree on that. The part that triggered my thought on this, not necessarily too long ago, but a long time ago, and it keeps coming back up, is sometimes when you go through, let's say, a Wendy's drive through and if someone gets a combo meal, that's just as expensive as just going to a sit-down restaurant and grabbing a sandwich or even grabbing it to go without the tip. Yeah. And I was like, well, I understand the convenience of fast food, but is that really... And this is what I've been trying to debate with with myself, and you guys might help me here. But I, I really don't understand if, not necessarily the quality, but is it just too expensive for what you're getting? Because, you know, a sandwich versus a sandwich, same ingredients kind of stuff, is that convenience factor really worthwhile? Is it value added to the extra cost that we seem to pay for these drive through functions and, well, as you mentioned, the health problems? Well, think about, I mean, they may be similar ingredients, but they're not similar ingredients. These fast food things are filled with all these processed meats and all these chemicals and new nutrients your bodies can't even really use, like fried potatoes. You know how little nutrition there is to a fried potato? I would love to get a dietitian on this recording to tell you about some fried potatoes and what happens when it goes into your body. Hey, I, I, I like fried potatoes. Yeah, I, I'm here for I it. love my spuds. Don't you dare attack them too much. <laughs> yeah, seriously. But what you're paying for, you're not paying for the nutrition in that. You're paying for the satisfaction and the convenience of it. But you're you're not doing your health and your life any good by eating that fried potato as opposed to a sit-down restaurant where you could get some fresh vegetables um on that plate like with actual nutrition well don't forget wendy's is fresh never frozen but what were you saying platypus fresh is a situ like is a term that is a it's a marketed term fresh oh yeah green. like green fresh it doesn't mean anything like green and uh uh what is it nature uh or natural, or natural, yeah. Terms, free, free oh range. They mean nothing. They mean nothing. But what were you yeah, saying? They Planet just sound good, good, but they mean nothing. Adipus, what were you saying? We spoke over you a couple times. I, don't know, I, I was just going to come to the defense of fried potatoes. Like I will eat the shit out of some fries, and it's amazing. Like, I mean, plus we can't just pin, you know, the whole processed fried foods thing on fast food alone like i mean there are sit down places that have the same like thing oh, going. Yeah. i mean but i mean there's a restaurant called like the heart attack grill you know like there there's options but i do see what you're saying though like i i would definitely advocate for going to a sit down restaurant anyway like the quality of the food's probably going to be higher grade at minimum because like i don't know if this happens to y'all but if for whatever reason i go to mcdonald's a lot of the times I don't really feel full after eating it. It's exactly pretty weird. That. The foods don't fill you up, which make you want to spend more. And it comes from the processing that goes into them, all the uh, the preservatives that go into them. And the, what's happening is your body saying, I need nutrition. Your body knows that it's not getting what it's, it needs, which is why you still feel kind of hungry. On top of those preservatives, to make you feel like you're still hungry or want more to eat which makes the food in general addicting which gets you to come back and spend more so it's a whole cycle of getting you stuck i don't necessarily quick tangent i don't necessarily think it tastes good and that makes it addicting there's no, a lot it's of not that it tastes of... good it's the ingredients that go into it that makes it addicting so but, uh, a lot yeah, of that, that's fine that's fine, but what I was saying is there's a lot of people that the day after eating or even the same day, they feel upset about what they just ate. It doesn't sit well or anything, and they just kind of eat it because it is convenient. It was it the documentary Super Size Me? The guy, I forget his name, but whatever it is, he was like, yeah, I feel sick all the time eating this stuff. It's just not sitting well. And then various interviews and conversations and reports since then, people are like, yeah, we just eat it because we need something that's cheap and easy. We don't necessarily like it. It makes us feel bad. So I wouldn't say it's per se that the taste, I mean, maybe the first time you have it, but once you keep repeating and repeating it, just like a lot of things, the taste can go away and the, the joy can get sucked out. Yeah. Mm. The, um, what's it called? 
Yeah, the combo meals. That's in particular what I was thinking about. Anytime I've looked at a combo meal, that's where I think it's too expensive. Like, don't get me wrong. The Wendy's four for four or some of these other promotions places do like the Subway $5 foot long. You can tell they're, in a sense, justifying the cost by saying, look, we can keep it low. <laughs> this is what you know you're getting. I will defend Subway. I'm not calling them out in this conversation at all because you, you can get filled up on a Subway sub. Um, a lot of people can. Uh, but in, just in general, when I look at the menus, I, grown up, did a lot of eating on the dollar menu at McDonald's or just the Junior Whoppers or just the cheaper things like that. But that was also because you could, as you mentioned, get more just to try and get more filled up. Having a single Whopper or a quarter pounder for me isn't going to fill me up. But getting two Junior Whoppers, which used to be cheaper than a Whopper, is going to fill me up more than a Whopper would. Um, probably because there was more bread to it. Don't know. But nevertheless, um, that's where this whole thought came to me was I never ordered combo meals because I just I don't see it justified. Granted, I don't drink beverages, soda beverages and pop beverages, but I just I just never found a combo meal justifiable in my mind. Uh, I'm kind of the same way. I find now that I'm older, I mean, I used to get combo meals growing up, but now that I'm older, when I go to a fast food place, typically I don't always get the combo meal. Like I don't drink as many sodas. I obviously don't care about them fries though. Sometimes I do love some fries with like a, some, a frosty to dip the fries in or like loaded with some cheese and bacon and I'll pig out. But like outside of that, I'll, I'm satisfied with a 20 piece nugget from McDonald's and call it a day as opposed I... to eating fries and a drink with it. I never eat nuggets from a fast food place. I've never been a nugget guy who walks around like, yeah, I want to order some chicken nuggets today or chicken tenders. I've always been the burger or something else. Um, what about you, yeah, Vlad? You may not want to either. Just like peel back yeah. the breading on some of them. You may look at it and find that there's like an outline of a toe or like of a beak or something, and then you may not want to eat it again. But outside of that, it's okay. Mm. Uh, I like my toe flavored nuggets. What are you talking about? Uh, yum. <laughs> I mean, it, it depends. Like, I haven't been going to, like, I guess the most traditional fast food places as much lately. Like, because again, it just hasn't been as satisfying. Now, I used to, like, order stuff on the apps because they have, like, some pretty good deals sometimes. But. That was really the main draw for me. And you'd have to get like more than one sandwich or like some nuggets and a sandwich. But I mean, it had to be like two entrees type of deal. And then it still wasn't that satisfying. But lately, if I get like fast food, quote unquote, at something like, like Jersey Mike's or like Chipotle or Subway or something, it's a bit heartier. And I don't, know. I don't I'm not saying it's like amazing for you, but I at least don't feel like shit and want to die like immediately afterwards. So. That's usually what I lean on for like my fast food needs lately because I like I like cookout, but the last time I had it, it fucked up my stomach for like a few days. I know it's dirt cheap and like, I mean, I guess it tastes good, but I don't know. I, I guess you have to like build up a tolerance to fast food if you don't get it that much. And that's what I do. Side note, I do want to have a debate with people about the best fast food french fries. Personally, I actually really like the McDonald's fries, even though I know what they taste like, especially when they're done wrong or they've been out too long. Um, but back to what I was going to go forward with the conversation. Anthony, you mentioned the health problems with fast food. So do you, now granted again, none of us are probably eating fast food on a daily basis anymore. You don't have a hesitation when people grabbing it periodically. It's just the long-term damage of having a lot of it, correct? That's what you're complaining about? Worrying about. Wait, what? Your volume wasn't very loud on my end. Yeah, sorry. The health complications you were talking about, that's just people who eat it in excess for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. Just having the occasional whopper is not going to cause too much damage to you, just like anything else you could you could cook it. Oh home. yeah, eating in moderation is key to really anything. Like I had a Burger King burger yesterday, and oh my god, it was amazing. Burger King is turning back around. Like when we were kids, Burger King 
and McDonald's were kind of neck and neck. Now I feel like Burger King, then like for several years, McDonald's became an industry leader and boomed and grew like crazy when they added their McCafe and their healthy options. And Burger King fell to the side and like was kind of really shitty for a while. Now I feel like Burger King has bypassed McDonald's and their quality and McDonald's has gone downhill. They got rid of their healthy stuff. Their McCafe like is good, but as far as their food, their food has gone down. They it, like they got rid of the healthy stuff that I was going to McDonald's for and lost quality in their um their staple menu items. While Burger King has grown in their staple menu items without having to expand too much on the healthy stuff, so like they've come back. Like I really enjoyed that burger yesterday. It was a number five on the menu with like some barbecue, like <laughs> bacon, and it it was a double cheeseburger, and it just smells good when you walk up to Burger King. Like it smells like a fresh char grill burger even though i know it's not that fresh but one way or another it was a big burger mcdonald's burgers are tiny now so like i, I was happy with that and i probably won't have another one for a couple weeks but i have a, a sheet of coupons for burger king on my kitchen counter right now staring at me where i can get two <laughs> burgers for like four dollars and i may consider it again in a few days but so like, that that kind of stems back to what I mentioned at the start, though, is if you take a hypothetical, let's just take off the brand names and everything. If you say that the ingredients are the same and you say that the value, or not the value, you say the ingredients are the same and you say the venue is somewhat similar, except one is just the drive through fast food chain, the other one's the sit-down restaurant, what is the difference in value of the food and the experience that that's why i say it's too expensive because you drive through you're grabbing your food and you're gone in theory is how fast food works um, well, I to... drive but, but what i'm saying though is is there really that much more value to sitting down at a restaurant or going to a local pop restaurant to get your food and to go through a production line fast food place and if so does that really substantiate the cost difference that that's uh, the value concern I have is, uh, is it suggestion worth it, sitting down? Yeah, what is the difference in value justifiable in cost? No, I don't think people view it as that anymore. Because back, if you think about it, back when uh, restaurants used to be restaurants before they added the drive-through line, people used to go to and to have an experience and sit down. Think about how society has changed. From a long time ago today, people have less time today, which is why fast food businesses Exist. came about. People don't have time to socialize. We now do our socialization on through mediums like Facebook and TikTok and stuff that only take a couple minutes, as opposed to dedicating hours of time to sitting down with people who are true friends. Now we just fill our time with all these extra people who really aren't substantive friends. They're just acquaintances that we spend a few minutes with online because that's all we have time for. It's our whole societal standards now. We have less time because we have to work more just to survive in this life. We're so dependent on so many other things which can really expand this conversation to a higher level. Like, there's a, it's a there, different yeah, there's day a, there's a lot I agree with you there. Um, I wanted to get platypus's input on this real quick, but yeah. I'm one of those who I will go to a restaurant and sit alone and dine alone and eat alone. So I, I did have, that at Burger I, King yesterday. Now, <laughs> I'm not talking. A, I'm not talking a fast food joint. I'm talking like an actual. You see the chef behind the counter, and you you see a sushi bar. You see some sort of like more formal setting with the host and waitress and everything. Uh, I, I will go to an actual restaurant of that nature and just sit and dine alone and not have a problem, which is where I draw my comparisons when I say fast food is, to me, the value of just sitting there at the chair and the, per se, host or hostess and all that stuff does have a lot more value to it than just going to a cookout drive through or 
as you said, grabbing your veal at the Burger King line and then sitting down. I can't necessarily articulate it. Um, platypus, haven't you? I, I'm probably wrong here. I thought you've had quite a few experiences where you just, you've gone to a restaurant to try it out and you just sat down inside the place and ate there. Am I wrong? Yeah, no, you're you're correct. I mean, I I do I go to the movies, I go to restaurants by myself because, like you said, it's like about the experience. And in that sense, you know, it is nicer to have someone that's like checking on you and like bringing you a drink and everything. Because you're still you're alive, saying, right? <laughs> <laughs> still breathing? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, like you, you know, like if you take the tip out of the equation, the price is pretty similar. Yeah. But, you know, like, you're getting better food and everything. And if it's a cool spot, then, you know, atmosphere matters. So if you're taking, like, every facet of your meal into account, just, like, what you're doing and the environment and everything, then, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of value if you want to, like, check out a new spot, go in, sit down, like, take in the place and experience the food. Plus, I mean, you know, chances are if you're sitting down, it might be at least a little bit more unique. I don't, like... The whole point of fast food is it's all pretty samey and automated. So, you know, there's differences, but like, they, you know, fast food exists for a reason. Because like Anthony was saying, there's just not really as much time to do shit nowadays, which which blows. So, I mean, you, you win some, you lose some either way. Some of my uh, favorite meals that I had just like last month where when I went to a place, a new place and just sat down alone and ate by myself, you get more time to just kind of, for lack of the word, savor and enjoy the meal itself. Granted, when you go with people, you're enjoying the experience of socializing and the company and things of that nature. Um, maybe try each other's food. But when you go by yourself, it's all of you. It's like, what do I think of this? How do I feel about this? What's going on? Uh, which is, I like making myself feel uncomfortable, so that's why I don't mind doing those kind of things. <laughs> but um, you know, some of my favorite meals are things that I did by myself, and all I could do is just message someone or tell them in a story and say, this was fantastic. you got to go there on your own sometimes. Uh, which takes – I, and that's where I started hitting my, hitting my hesitations is I internalize my experience different because I'm eating alone, then I may internalize the experience if I ate with someone. And I think that's also an element you both have brought up, is that fast food, you grab and go, is the premise. And you can go eat with people elsewhere if you do it all. But with a restaurant, generally, what, most of the time what happens is people are there to socialize. So is part of the value the socialization, or does it all stem from the meal itself? Anthony, I think you're muted. Yeah, I'm muted. Sorry, I had to walk away a second. I had to blow my nose. My allergies are kicking in, and I forgot my allergy meds today and yesterday. So I wasn't here for like half of what you just said. <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> you know what? That's... I think it's time for that. Just fire me. At this point, I'm sorry, y'all. All I was saying, all, all I said was um, part of the experience of eating at a restaurant is the premise of the social engagement. That you oh, yeah, that's with other people. what I was saying. Yeah, but for me, I the way I internalize a meal and the value, the cost of the meal is different if I'm eating alone versus whether I'm eating with people. But does that social element actually justify changing the cost to make it more expensive? to be at a restaurant. I think that goes back to what I was saying before, where society is different now. People value convenience over sitting down because they just don't have time. I think restaurants now, the ones who are doing really well are the ones who add to the experience. Um, restaurants are having to invest and spend even more money now just to get people to come in by doing things like spending all my, a whole lot more money on the decoration, on the overall atmosphere. Um, when you go to Disney World, the best, like, Disney World is a thing in itself, but like Disney Springs, the restaurants there that are truly doing well are the ones that have like 
drive entertainment or like Rainforest Cafe, they have not only good food, like really good food, but they have the entertainment around you. We're at a point where people expect to be entertained at all times because if they're not, they're going to pick up their phones to be entertained. So to be able to sit down in a restaurant now, I don't think it's really worth paying extra to sit down to for most people because they already don't have the time but like if they're not being entertained every second they don't care to sit in that restaurant to sit down and with so many restaurants that now turning towards like frozen foods just like they get in a fast food place people are starting to not see a difference between either so, so does that I, mean that restaurants should start lowering their price or is the fast food price now justified because you're getting the same, in essence, service between a fast food and a restaurant? People aren't going to restaurants well, for the, for the ambience and the sit down. So I'm bringing a marketing approach. Our market is changing. Our customer is changing. We have a high supply of sit down restaurants that provide the same exact experience as a fast food restaurant. So we have a high supply. So with that, the demand is low for that because of the high supply. So economics comes into play. The, the sit down restaurants are gonna to have to start lowering price unless they make a change like what I was saying in the entertainment, it's supply and demand the market is going it's just like with a uh, movie theaters movie theater turnout ever since netflix and all these online streaming services has been going down people are more willing to pay to see the movie at home like disney is charging twenty dollars for an entire family to sit down at home to see a movie the day it comes out as opposed to going to a movie theater where they're going to pay $15 a person on average. So if the market is changing. So what are movie theaters doing to be able to satisfy the customer? They're adding in these reclining seats or massaging seats. Um, all the theaters are going towards this um, Cena Bistro type luxury that used to be a luxury back in the day, but is now becoming the standard that people expect today. It's just like luxury cars. Luxury cars are now having to change with the customer because now the luxury standards of 10, 15 years ago are becoming a standard of today. So it's sounds, a matter that of sounds like quality of, that sounds like standard quality of life improvements though. People come well, to expect yeah, that too. yeah. People come to expect different uh, as you mentioned standards and quality of life and the expectations are being met because companies want to stay in business, which uh, does tie back into what I was saying earlier is that that might actually be the articulation I needed to help clarify why I feel like fast food is getting too expensive what you're actually getting nowadays because that process is being adopted and normalized in the restaurant industry which i think you did you guys both helped articulate that um and thank you for that did before i picked a, i had another topic i wanted to talk to you guys about an, an easier transition uh is there any final thoughts you wanted to provide on that fast food topic real quick because i think we're, we've hashed it out pretty thoroughly I think we're starting to kick the horse, and I'm not up for uh, animal abuse in any way. <laughs> you know we, we, what he said. I'm not against hurting the animals, so we can we can move on. All right. All right, cool. Going back to that, things are too expensive, and inflation, or whatever else, whatever other economic term you want to use. Um, you guys think the tooth fairy adjusts its exchange for exchange rate for inflation? Like when I was a kid growing up, I would get let's say a dollar for a tooth. Do what do you think kids are getting nowadays? Five, twenty bucks? Oh, I think we're gonna upset some some tooth fairies out there with this one. So growing up I got five dollars a tooth. Holy cow. Just, holy shit. I mean I don't remember. It'd just be like <laughs> one or two like golden dollars or something. 
ordered I don't, or maybe it was like a two dollar bill one so i think it was random i don't know Where, whatever she pulled out of her wallet that day <laughs> pretty much that was that must say a lot about your quality of teeth then because i i guess mine must have had too many cavities like oh, gosh i guess you get a dollar um <laughs> <laughs> but your, your shiny white pearls get five dollars a pop you better be growing some new ones pretty quickly that's your income um <laughs> you don't get an allowance but no I, that was just a quick thought i had last night but what i really want to mention was i also we talked about things being too expensive and paying too much i think celebrities and models are paid too much just to be public images and feel free to agree or disagree i really don't think it's it will probably provide context to help me understand why, but I don't think it's worth paying someone millions of dollars just to put their face on a magazine once a year or whatever else they're doing. Just to well, be sexy. Well, if, that, if, even, if even, they don't even have to the put market. their face on. Think about it. It's the market, the supply and demand. People are willing to pay enough money to see that celebrity that the celebrity is able to to, is that's what they're worth so it's just like think about singers so like the market for small town singers is very small which is why they don't get paid as much as the ones you hear on the radio nationally it it all comes down to the market so think about society that's what society is willing to pay for so you can't really downgrade the fact that they're charging that much for a photo or uh, to be popular or whatever, it's the fact that they're able to because people want them. So you that's can't... that's what I can't connect to it. And this might be this might be a me thing. I don't I don't understand why people look at someone and say that is a person who I need to get everyone else to look at. That's the person we need as the face of the company. Like I can understand a celebrity, big name, like. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, everyone knows him, he's all in the news, you want to do something in brand deal with him because they'll get more attention. I understand that marketing aspect of it. But when you look at like a, a magazine and you get this model you've never seen before, male or female, um, or you get this foot model, or you get uh, an advertisement for a Fitbit and you have someone's arm in that picture and they're going swimming or whatever they're doing, I don't, like I understand these are smaller people so they're paid less. But in general, if you looked at a lot of these contracts and deals, especially when you get to the more popular brands like Time Magazine and stuff, people pay a lot of money for basically people we've never seen or heard of before. And that, that's, what, that's what I don't understand. I mean, see where... Because, look, because, look, think about it. Human instinct naturally goes towards the best looking. Here in America, America is known for being obese and unhealthy. So there is a low, very low supply of truly beautiful bodies and people. It, it's very small. So to come by that, it, it, I mean, people are willing to pay more. And that's what people naturally want to see. Even the fat and unhealthy and just different people that America is made of are willing to pay to see the better looking people. They either idolize them or they fantasize them. And it just naturally comes to that. You can't really like say, oh, well, why are we going to pay for this? Look at societal standards. You may not personally be able to see it because you think on an intellectual level. But most of society comes to things based on an attraction level. Their intellectual level isn't at a point where they care. Like, uh, un uh, unfiltered pineapple, where we slowly attack everyone in the country all at once. <laughs> I mean, all just, what, and everyone listening to this knows it's true. Uh, some of them are adding to the problem of the generation. It's like my sister... Uh, not or not my sister, a friend of mine the other day um, was saying to me, it, they were like, why are the Kardashians so famous, this and that? It's because they're playing their cards right. People are willing to pay for that. They're paying to see it. 
And you know what? The Kardashians know their customer. They know people want to pay to see them and what they want to see. So it's like, can you blame the Kardashians for doing what they do? It's what no, I know. Them. They're the yeah. ones that are making all the money. They're the ones that have the businesses and are living the lifestyle because of what they're doing. But people are paying for it. So you can't really blame them because there's a market for what they're doing. I saw a woman yesterday making millions off of selling her damn farts, selling farts in a jar. That's but been a story for a while it. now. <laughs> that's, well, that's been a story for years. <laughs> yeah, but think about it. Can you blame her? She's making money. Like, Plat I could put my face Plat in front of that, but it's... Platypus, yeah. are you going to buy a fart jar anytime soon? Start selling it yourself? You're goddamn right. I won't do that. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame them. I mean, if anything, you just blame like the simps. I mean, if I found out that I could sell like clippings of my armpit hair and like pay off college, <laughs> you bet your fucking ass I'm going to do that. Like it like the market is what it is. I mean, you guys are both right. It's it's really just about supply and demand. It's not fair at all, but life isn't fair. I mean, like, I get the whole idea that, like, people probably shouldn't be paid just because they're conventionally attractive, but they only get paid, like, that Fitbit arm you were talking about. I mean, Fitbit's worth some money, so that person helps Fitbit make even more money, and they get paid accordingly. Like, it's it's not fair, but if I guess if you think about it in terms of numbers and, you know, the actual demand for shit, then it starts to make sense because it's... It's just about scale and sex sells. It's always sold. Like it's it's like programmed into humanity. So, so that brings up a thought. I actually give me a moment to think about it. I might have a, an example. But do you guys have examples of you saw a celebrity endorse something, or you saw a model and the sex appeal of it? It's like you know what? I'm going to buy that. Maybe not immediately, but sometime in the near future, you realize that you actually bought it um, just because of the appeal. Do you guys ever find that kind of marketing trick working on you? Or are you kind of like me? You're mostly all about functionality. If you get it, it's got to function the way you expect it to. No, I'm mostly about function. I mean, maybe if someone whose opinion I respect endorses something, I might. I mean, I'd still do my research either way, depending on like how much money I'm spending. I want to know as much as possible. But usually function matters the most. And like, again, if... If someone who I think has a pretty solid take on things is talking about something, I'll at least, like, look into it or maybe consider it more. But I want to make sure, like, whatever I got is going to work and do what I need for it, too, instead of being, like, some some cheap way for other people to make money. Yeah, I'm the same. I prefer functionality. Um, it, I've lived very cheaply. Um, for a while, I don't care to have the most luxurious of things, um, but what I've found is like it, it goes like this is going to kind of relate to societal and attraction and whatnot, but also how you present yourself it determines who you can associate with too. So this is kind of leading into an expansion on the topic, but like. You may prefer functionality and whatnot over certain things, but you may inadvertently hurt yourself by not presenting yourself in a way that would connect you with a higher level or of social status type of people, too. Oh, so I like, actually do hear that from people. Like, yeah, you don't, you're a very uh, personal and presentable person, but like the style you dress with and all that is like, cool. Well, this is what they're getting. <laughs> you, yeah, you, no, you get that I, honesty I, up front. That's a style in itself, the honesty up front. Like, uh, the, like, and I've seen it. Since I've been down here, I've met people driving Range Rovers or whatnot, and, or, like, driving Bentleys, or driving, like, Mercedes. And when they see my little Kia, I can see in their face they don't say it. But I see in their face, their attitude changes and their perception of me changes instantly. Like, it, it's kind of 
sad. I mean, they're not wrong in their perception. I don't have the level of money or income or status that they have. Now, do I have the knowledge? Yes. Yeah, some of these people I've met, I can tell just in the way they speak that I taught them while we were speaking some things. I could, gave them knowledge, but in the way I presented myself, it was obvious that I wasn't at the level in life that they're at, despite my level of knowledge. So it's like in society, you don't need to know it all to really get ahead. You just need to be strategic and use your resources. You need to know your customer, like the Kardashians know their customer. The All these people who are beautiful and uh, absolutely stupid, but they make millions in life on the cover of magazines um, and different things, like can get ahead. Beautiful people can get ahead just because they're beautiful and the way they present themselves and the way they look. And I will say firsthand, I've seen it going from like my weight over the years has fluctuated because I've had a lot of life surprises. I've had a lot of things and like I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not into drugs, but like food it, in a way is a way to satisfy. And it's a comfort even, food for a lot of people. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a comfort. comfort. But yeah. it, even then, like sometimes I'll have a healthy diet, but stress or different things could, could change its hormones, which cause me to gain weight. And I found that too. So it's not always even the food. It's just the life experiences. But in that, what I'm getting at is as my weight has fluctuated over the years, I've seen how people treat me. In the past, I'm in the best health I've ever been in currently. And in the past five, six months, since I've gone from being around 215 and kind of mus I was muscular, I was, I was uh, solid, uh, to now I'm around 180 to 185, the people I'm attracting is different. I'm attracting a whole lot more people. And I'm finding that I'm attracting all kinds of people from all social statuses, all levels of life, all knowledge. And I'm getting more opportunities in life because of the way I look. Like people treat me differently. When I go to a restaurant, when I go to a gas station, the way people treat me is different. When I go to a bar, you get that premium gas at the gas station, don't you? Someone pays for it, doesn't <laughs> No. Um, I mean, when I go to a bar, I get my drinks paid for sometimes. Um, or the bartender <laughs> will upgrade my drinks. I notice that they'll uh, add more liquor to my drink than before. I find life is better, looking better, than it is when uh, the way I was before. And it's crazy, but it's like, that's just how society is. Life is better when you look good. You feel more confident. People treat you better. People want you. And when people want you, you have more of a say and option in your life overall. And I've found that, like, for the first time, I'm saying no to opportunities. For the first time, I'm saying no to people I'm talking to. When before... I was just trying to hold on to anyone that came my way. So looking good and feeling good and just presenting yourself in a way, it may not be ideal. Uh, to the intellectual, it doesn't make sense. To the person who is basing things on usability, it's not going to matter. But to the majority of people who follow the law of attraction in life, it matters. And unnaturally, we all have that bias. We naturally are going to always go towards the one that looks better, whether we think so or not. Because despite the fact that my car has the functionality and the usability, I still wanted a car that looked good. If I wanted true uh, functionality and usability, I would have gone for like a Prius or something ugly like that, but I didn't want to. So yeah, platypus, I, I um, other things in. Platypus, I, I'm kind of a little offended for you here. Feel free to interject, but it sounds as though Anthony here is talking about how attractive and how good he is. And 
because of that he's being more successful than you are. <laughs> You're not using your attraction enough, Platypus. You got to step it up. Yeah, I was thinking, I guess, no offense to the uglies, by the way, while we're on this little monologue here, but all right. <laughs> Yeah, get, like, you gotta get you gotta get more you know, sexy I'm muscles. Honest of society, like I'm using my own personal examples. I was ugly most of my life, and to some, I'm still <laughs> ugly as fuck, looking like a damn bird with, with my big ass nose. So what's, that, not, what's, I'm, what's I'm the, the word fuggly? Fuzzy. Yeah. Some days I look in the mirror and I'm like, I'm fucking fuggly. Um, but it's like I can tell firsthand the difference because I lost so much weight. In such a short period of time, it was like night and day. And I've done that a couple times now. Even I've changed the way I've dressed. I've gone into the same place looking exactly the same, dressed like shit. And then the next day, come in with a nice fade and wearing some Michael Kors and like some nice high value clothes and using God. Oh my God. When I got my Amex card, People acted so different when I got the Amex card, but it's all how you present yourself. And so like, the it's a confidence thing then too. Yeah, the, 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 co the confidence is what makes someone can, someone who is a lot uglier than what more, most people consider attractive can meet certain levels and be at par just because of their confidence in themselves. So there's a lot of people that find confidence sexy and appealing. Oh yeah, but it's so not men. Yeah, they have high like charm stats. You know, charisma matters. It yeah, all makes I, a difference. Yeah, like well, cult, a lot of cult leaders <laughs> are not the most attractive people. Uh, the charisma alone, they're like, yeah, that guy, he's a role model because of his confidence. Yeah, but it's rare. It's rare you see that. All right. Yeah, um, that was a good tangent. I liked the points you raised, but. Going back to the public model and the the attractiveness element, one thing I did want to also bring up about that is I know that these people are only, unless you're like a major celebrity like Betty White was for decades, a lot of people fade out of the public eye, and then they no longer get paid to be celebrities and be models. They're not making those high dollars because they're not in their prime anymore. Is that... So taking that into equation, do you guys find that as a little bit of a, of a good justification as to why they could be paid as much as they are in their prime? Kind of like how sport athletes will get paid a lot for the three to five years that they dedicate their body to the sport. Um, do you think that same element can and should apply for models and celebrities? Uh, I mean, I... I guess it kind of has to apply because if you if you look at it from the perspective of sports, like a football player isn't going to be able to maintain that level of activity for long periods of time. In most cases, obviously, barring people like Tom Brady, but still, like it's uncommon. And he's like he's a quarterback, so it's a bit less contact. It's not the same type of deal. But if you look at it from the perspective of modeling, same type of deal. I mean. You can argue, like, attractiveness all day. Like, it's always, you know, beauties in the eye of the beholder and all that good shit. But still, like, everyone has, like, a traditional conventional peak, so to speak. And you don't look the same way forever. So e even still, like, you couldn't model the same things, like, for extended periods of time. It just wouldn't work. So in that sense, just to, like, match the demand, like, physical demand for sports... And I guess just like an aesthetic demand, quote unquote, for modeling, like it all just has like a built in expiration date, so to speak. I mean, yeah. I think it just kind of is what it is. Okay. Yeah. I, um, when I take that into consideration, I do find myself able to justify it a little more for whatever reason that their perceived value at the present uh, justifies the cost that they are being paid, the, the uh, price tags that they have attached to them. Because, um, yeah, what is it, statistically, like 70 to 80% of people will fade out after their prime, and then they go back to working at a hotel or just some small gig, small, whatever else it is they're doing. So they don't 
not everyone lives the life of Betty White where for 70 years she's in the public attention. Whatever she endorses, people recognize her. Um, or as you mentioned, Tom Brady. If Tom Brady were to endorse something 20 years from now, people are going to be like, hey, that's Tom Brady. I recognize him. So that, that face value does, to me, justify the real top dogs with what they're paying because that's what marketing is. You're paying, you're paying to get that attention out there and to grab people's attention. But, yeah, the intellectual part of me just, I just don't grasp onto this as much as I'd like to. In theory, I understand it. Talking it out, I understand it. But in general, it just it's just not the way I approach life and approach things, so it doesn't appeal to me as much as it should. And again, as you've ca probably caught on to this, I'm pretty cheap, too, so I don't like spending money where I don't need to spend money. <laughs> but, uh, no, that was a great topic, great discussion. I did have one final question for you guys before we uh, close down this podcast episode, and that is, it, it's kind of a callback, something I just kind of wanted to ponder a little bit, but what food do you guys think the Tooth Fairy spends her income on? She's all about ta she's all about taking teeth. Doesn't mean she's all in favor of healthy teeth. So what do you think she's splurging herself on every day when she gets her profits? Um, ice cream. Really? So it's not like it's not like The Rock because uh, that could like affect my answer. What? Wasn't The Rock the Tooth Fairy or something? Yeah, and, and what movie was that? <laughs> I know bedtime or something like that. Bedtime stories, something like that. Yeah, I used the Tooth Fairy for a movie. <laughs> no, bedtime stories was a different movie. What's the I movie think then? It was in the I... movie The Tooth Fairy. What's... <laughs> is is that what it was called? I have to Google this. I don't know off the top of my head. I know what you're talking about though. Um, but no, I I I was the same thing, Anthony. I was thinking that she would just spend her money on ice cream all the time. <laughs> It is. The movie is called Tooth Fairy. That's the name of the movie. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Well, thanks everybody for listening. This has been another episode of Unfiltered Pineapple with your host, Orc, Anthony, and Platypus. We're glad you guys could join us today. And if you don't mind, please follow us on all the social media. Leave some comments below. Just keep up and keep engaged. You guys had any final party words? Nah, man. Just thanks for tuning in, and we'll uh, see you next time. Uh, I don't know. What what should I say? What should I say? <laughs> Stay beautiful, people. Your lives and your success depend on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs>